Hello everyone, welcome to an exciting episode of Science News. Today, I bring you a discovery that may soon have globe-spanning effects on population and ecology. The findings come from Cambridge University, where a team of researchers led by Dr. Paolo Bombelli wrote a paper, published in the journal Current Biology, about a novel feature observed in the larva of the wax moth Galeria malinella. These larvae can actually digest polymers like polyethylene and polypropylene. The larvae of these wax moths are called wax worms because of their worm-like shape and their waxy white carapace. Wax worms are an extremely common animal, used in university research and education all over the world. These particular researchers, headed by Dr. Bombelli, observed wax worms chewing holes in a plastic bag in less than an hour, which is amazing when you consider that no other organism can digest plastic this fast. I mean, it's amazing when you consider that no other animals can really digest plastics. It's also amazing when you consider that the lifespan of most plastics is centuries. You know, they pretty much last until geological and meteorological processes grind them into dust. These waxworms, though, are able to eat up chunks of it on a timescale measured in minutes. So this leads to the question, are the waxworms really digesting the plastic on a chemical level? Or is the plastic just being destroyed by the mechanical chewing actions? If it's just mechanical chewing, then you can move along because there's really nothing to see here. But fortunately for us, reality is more exciting because these waxworms are truly breaking down the plastic on a chemical level. The polymers that compose the plastic are literally being broken down through chemical interactions and the plastic's integrity is weakened on a molecular level. This raised a second question. Are the waxworms themselves responsible for this chemical digestion, or is the plastic being digested by a microbe within the waxworm's gut? This question isn't answered yet. It'll take more research. But it's not implausible. After all, in 2016, a group of Japanese researchers discovered a bacteria that can digest the plastics in most water bottles. Bacteria and other microbes are such a varied group that you can find some of them who will eat almost anything. I mean, there are bacteria who live and thrive in the super salty hot springs of like a, a geothermal geyser or something like that. There are microbes who eat the synthetic chemicals that we produce for our heavy industry. Hell, there are bacteria who live and eat on the elephant's foot in Chernobyl, which is the giant mass of molten radioactive slag that came out of the reactor. Polymer digesting microbes have been significantly harder to find, which is why a discovery like this could be so important. If we can somehow harness the plastic degrading properties of these wax worms, we might have a viable solution to the bulk of our plastic pollution problems. This could, quite possibly, be a revolution in recycling that the world really needs right now. But unfortunately, it's, it's not a perfect fix. It's not an ideal solution. There are downsides, and these are serious downsides, that we really have to take into consideration. First and foremost, wax worms grow into wax moths, and the wax moths are named after the waxes that they eat. Specifically, they eat beeswax, which is the stuff that bees use to make their hives. Surprise, surprise, wax moths can destroy beehives. So if we breed wax moths in an attempt to get huge swarms of plastic-eating bugs to clean up the world, we risk the bees. We expose the bees. We're exposing them to huge swarms of their most hated antagonists, to, uh, to the insect that literally eats their homes. And so if the bee population takes a hit like this, while already suffering from years of colony collapse disorder, we might push them closer to the brink of extinction. The flowering plants that depend on those bees as pollinators will also suffer, as they won't be able to reproduce nearly as effectively without their fundamental partner in their mutualist relationship. The second downside that I'm going to talk about is even more insidious than the first. Even more insidious than destroying all of the bees and the flowers that they depend on. Do you remember microbeads? They were popular in shampoos and stuff like that for a while, but they got banned after it was shown how dangerous they were. The plastic microbeads would fall down the shower drain and accumulate in bodies of water, where they would saturate local marine habitats. The local animals, like fish and amphibians and crustaceans and stuff like that, they would mistake the microbeads for food, and they'd eat them. But they would die of starvation, 
because they can't digest the plastic microbeads. Their stomachs would be full of these microbeads. You know, and they'd be, they'd be getting the signals in their brain that they were full and that they shouldn't eat more, but they weren't able to digest it. They didn't get any nutrients. And if they tried to eat real food, they could barely do it because they'd be in too much pain. Their stomachs were full. It was just an awful situation, and it led to their death by starvation. The problem is the same here. When the waxworms chemically digest the plastic polymers, they don't fully destroy them. The polymers aren't broken down into their constituent atoms and scattered around like any other inorganic nutrient or something like that. Instead, this digestive process creates many small chunks of polymers, like crumbs, and these can just as easily saturate habitats. In fact, their small size would make it easier for them to saturate habitats. It would make them a serious irritant for soft tissues like the eyes or the nose or the mouth or the gills of various organisms that live around the polluted habitat. And this level of molecular pollution would be devastating because it would, it would affect everything. You know, plankton could mistake the microscopic bits of polymer for food and they could eat it and not get nutrients and die just like the other animals did. And not only that, these microscopic polymers would be a thousand times harder to clean up than our current plastic pollution. So while the waxworms present an exciting discovery, it's not going to be a perfect fix. There are no magic solutions that will fix our pollution problems overnight. If we want to keep our planet's habitat clean, our best lines of defense are first of all, preventing pollution, you know, in the first place, and then secondly, physically removing bits of plastic from the habitats that are polluted. Hopefully, whatever technology comes out of this discovery, be it some isolated set of genes that we can transplant into a bacteria or something, or a, a, a population control program for the wax moth so that we can do like a controlled digestion of various plastic heaps or something, whatever technology comes out of this, hopefully it'll be designed with, uh, with consideration for all of these potential negative consequences. Recycling plastic and cleaning it out of the world's ecosystems is a problem that I care deeply about, which is why I think we need to be extremely careful when dealing with potential solutions. We don't want to have anything backfire on us or have unintended consequences. Thank you.